Hello again. Day nine of the Betfair World Snooker Championship. We're back at the Crucible Theatre here in Sheffield for more Ronnie O'Sullivan, the defending champion, and he's in action this afternoon against Ali Carter, the man he beat in the final 12 months ago. 5-3 overnight to O'Sullivan. Stuart Bingham and Mark Davis finished their first session this morning 4-4. These are all second round matches, of course. Ricky Walden will resume tonight, 5-3 up on Robert Milkins. Mark King back out against Ding Jun Wee. It was 6-2 overnight. Ding has won the first two there, so it's now 6-4. Already through the quarterfinals, Sean Murphy, Judd Trump, Michael White and Barry Hawkins. Well, O'Sullivan just shaded it yesterday. In fact, he was 5-1 up, but Ali Carter finished the session well. He won the last two frames, so it was pretty close when they resumed this afternoon, 5-3. O'Sullivan won the first with a break of 86. Carter came back to win the next two frames with breaks of 73 and 87. So uh, that meant that he'd uh, closed to within a single frame, 6-5, which uh, is good going from 5-1 down, winning four of the next five frames. So we can show you what happened in frame 12. Nothing potted yet. Ali Carter at the table. Alan McManus alongside me for this one. Well, it's pretty simple from Ali's point of view, Alan. Just don't miss. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's the, the key thing for Ali Carter for this session. I think we all know the mood that Ronnie O'Sullivan's in. He's played so well his last match, and he's continued in the same vein. But uh, Ali Carter's dug in well. Of course, he was 5-1 down in this match. Ali Carter won. He just can't afford to miss those kind of balls. You know, he had a chance there, the reds spread far and wide. OK, it was no gimme by any means. As we say, he just can't afford to make these mistakes. It's a big frame, this, the one before the mid-session interval. Well, in the previous frame, O'Sullivan missed a red and Carter made 87 from it, so the moment Ronnie not quite firing on all cylinders. Yeah, previous frame, wasn't it? He missed a pretty routine red into the black pocket. Well, he stepped in and done the rest. So he's been given a reprieve here. Now, this is an awkward red. As I keep saying, he's got to take advantage of these positions. One. Yep. The one thing you do know, Ronnie O'Sullivan isn't going to keep missing like he has done this frame in the last, missing a couple of guilt edge chances. Just a bit to sort out here, Ali Carter. When the black goes on its spot, it is going to be tied up. Thank you. Of course, the pink somewhat out of commission also. We may have to go into bulk off the next red. Eight.
Alicarta 12. See the disgust in Carter there. That was a basic error. Yeah. What damage has he done this time? Nothing obvious. A couple of reds near the pink spot. Make up back the right corner. He's taking his time, Dave, isn't he, Ronnie O'Sullivan, with these type of shots? You know, he's not rushing in. As I say, taking his time, measuring everything. That's a bad sign for his opponents. One. He's here to do a job. He's been away all year. But uh, chose to come back to attempt to defend this title. And uh, he's not been necessarily at his brilliant best all through, but he's played well. My word, he's played well. When he's been in, his long potting, a lot of people have commented on, hasn't been great. But when he's been close in, he's not missed much. That's why it was a surprise in the previous frame when he missed that red. And indeed the one in this frame. Four. Just lost the cue ball a touch this time. Overran it by a good 18 inches. I think was playing for the red to right centre. That's a brilliant recovery though. Purposely played. Choice of bulk colours or the blue. So one good positional shot here. Couldn't have placed the white better with his hand there. Now, as we've said, he's made a couple of basic errors last couple of frames. I don't expect one this time. No, Ronnie O'Sullivan and Stephen Seven. Hendry, two, the two greatest break builders who ever lived. They've each had 11 maximums. Eight. O'Sullivan's had three here. Hendry, 127 crucible centuries. O'Sullivan, 119. But of course, Stephen Hendry has now retired. Twenty-five. Twenty. He played a session here once in a semi-final, 1999, the year Hendry won his last seventh world title. A session of their semi-final were five centuries in the eight frames played. 33. 34. Now Sullivan has been playing here now for 20 years. He first came here in 1993. A loss to a certain Alan McManus in the first round. Of course, he's won four titles. Beat Ali Carter twice 40. in finals, including last year. 42. No one really knew what to expect from him this year, but it's like he's never been away. Forty-nine. Fifty. Yeah, 
He's taking these well and fast approaching. The winning line in this frame. Red pink for 51 50. in front, red black would put him 52. Fifty-eight. Well, that horrendous error from Ali Carter is what let him in. <laughs> and uh, it's cost him the frame. Sixty-five. Sixty-six. Seventy three, seventy four, eighty one, eighty two. Well, no reason now why there shouldn't be another century, it would be his hundred and twentieth at the Crucible. Eighty-five. Eighty-seven. No doubt he missed right. Snooker in his sabbatical. He said that. He said he was watching some of the tournaments and he even came to the Masters to watch one of the matches. Ninety-four. Looks like absence made the heart grow fonder for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Well, it's good to have him back. 99. Unless, that is, maybe you're one of the other players in this tournament. Pick for the century. <laughs> well, he's had a look at the black, and he didn't fancy it. But 105, sublime stuff from Ronnie O'Sullivan. An important frame from Ali Carter was fighting back from 5-1 down, but it's O'Sullivan who goes to the interval with that two-frame lead restored at 7-5. They play another four frames in this session, and it's first to 13 who reaches the quarter-finals. Here are the uh, stats. Carter narrowly in front on the pot success. Safety about level, long potting about level. So it's not much in this match, and Carter knows uh, he was in there in that frame. It could have been 6-all. He's played well in the session, but O'Sullivan just stepping it up as he so often does there. Some big breaks in the session, 86 and 105 from O'Sullivan, 73 and 87 from Carter, and that has got us to 7-5 to O'Sullivan, so it's as you were in terms of his two-frame lead. Players will be back uh, shortly to continue, so we'll take a quick break and then we'll be back live at the Crucible for more from the World Snooker Championship. Giro d'Italia, from May the 4th to the 26th, live on Eurosport and Eurosport 2. up to the fact of exactly what he has achieved. This oh, was the plan. look at that! Perfectly delivered, and wow. he's just said goodbye to everybody. A magnificent ride, brilliant win. The Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan! He has to be mentally strong himself, as you say, which he is normally. Yes, he can! 
Fist in again, and that is the opening goal this time for Germany. Outstanding action, extreme emotion. That's May on Eurosport. this massive disappointment what a picture that is oh it is no way. can you believe it the emotions are high Welcome back to the Crucible Eurosport 2, by the way. Ding Jun Wei gets Mark King. It was 6 2 to King. Ding has pulled back to 6 5, so it's got a lot closer there. You can watch that on Eurosport 2. We're waiting for Ronnie O'Sullivan and Ali Carter to return. In the meantime, we can take it back to a match we were watching earlier on uh, this morning. It was uh, Stuart Bingham and Mark Davis. They were starting out in their second round match. It was very close, this one. I can just show you how the session ended. 4 3 to Bingham as we pick it up. You see that Mark Davis uh, 52 points in front in this frame, looking to level it up. And a good pop there. This session got better. It was very scrappy early on, but uh, Bingham had a century and standard certainly improved, as we thought it would do. And uh, I don't think it was any great surprise that he'd ended up being very tight indeed. I think uh, a lot of people feel it could be like that all the way through. They come back this evening and they'll finish off uh, tomorrow. Two good friends here, two very experienced players, both looking for their first quarter final at the Crucible. 62. Of course, Davis beat John Higgins, four times champion, 10 6 in the first round. But uh, this black he knew would give him the frame. Much more fluent finish to the session than how it began. It was very uh, scrappy, edgy, balls went awkward early on and both players were struggling. Mark Davis has never had a century here. 96 is highest break. That was against Higgins. And uh, unfortunately, he still hasn't, because he's missed that on 84. But the main thing is uh, not only winning the frame, but actually putting together a good break after the disappointing start. So in the end, it was a good session of snooker. He finished all square at 4-4. And uh, Stuart Bingham and Mark Davis will return tonight to play their next eight frames. And we can move on to the other match from this morning. It was Robert Milkins and Ricky Walden. Walden we hadn't seen uh, for a week because uh, he's had a well just seven days off since he beat Michael Holt 10-1. Of course Milkins won one of the uh, real shocks uh, of the first round beat. Neil Robertson one of the players of the season 10-8. This was a close one as well. Walden was uh, in front early on but as we pick it up here Milkins you can see it's 5-2 to Walden but Milkins is obviously going to win this frame so he will be delighted with his finish here. Seventy-seven. Thought he had a century earlier on in the uh, session. Seventy-nine. That was his first, again, his first ever at the Crucible. Both very attacking players, these two like to really get stuck in. And uh, it's a half of the draw, as it's seen, the, the exits of Robertson, of course, Mark Allen, Mark Selby. So uh, Steve Maguire, Mark Williams, so it's, uh, it's wide open. Six. Michael White and Barry Hawkins already in the quarterfinals. 91. Pink and black for a second century, and uh, 106 earlier. 97. Good way to finish. Leave the arena with a real spring in his step, particularly as he was, of course, he's 5-2 down. But that was terrific. 104 to finish. Good session. Ricky Walden 
leading Robert Wilkins by five frames to three. And like Bingham and Davis, they'll be back tonight to play the second session, the next eight frames. We'll take a short break. When we're back, it's Ronnie O'Sullivan against Ali Carter. Hurricanes coming, you hear a lot of warnings. The government warn you. The media. The emergency services. But nature has its own warning. The birds. Because when they leave, it's going to strike. The conditions are dramatic and they're deteriorating by the second. The water levels are rising and the wind is very strong indeed. Ronnie O'Sullivan breaking here in frame 13, leading Ali Carter 7-5. It was 5-3, it was 6-5. O'Sullivan made that uh, break, that century 105, to get his two-frame lead back. Then they play another four in this little mini-session. They're back tomorrow night to finish off. question is, how close can Ali Carter make this? Can he keep in touch, possibly go in front, or is O'Sullivan just going to extend this lead? We'll find out over the course of the next four frames. been a high standard, hasn't it, Dave, this afternoon? These two players, high scoring, all four frames before the mid-session interval. There's nothing to suggest that that won't continue. Both players look in top form. That's a beautiful shot from the side. Can he stop short of the ball playing? A choice of brown or yellow. Well, I was saying his long potting is, hasn't been great. There's nothing wrong with that. Five. Six. Yeah, lots of work to do here. Would expect Ronnie to maybe play the pink this time. Just depends whether in potting the pink it would tie up the red at the back of the cluster. Maybe it will, so deciding just on the black for this red in the cushion. Plays these shots so well, mind you. Pockets are very tight. 13. I mentioned a couple of times in commentary this week that these cloths are now three or four days old. You've got to be very accurate. 14. Purposely playing low in this red. 21. Expect a deep screw this time off the pack. Is he going to play a force and stun shot through them? 22. He has done. That's just about OK. You see that, the force and stun. Just pushed another couple of reds into the open. Twenty-nine. Now what's his choice going to be? At first glance I don't think it's a great pack to go in off the black. They are loosely packed and that's what he's just weighing up. Is it time to go in now or just bide this time for a few shots? Can play top side of the pink for the loose red. It's just whether or not he senses this is the right time to go into them.
30 minutes. It's not bad. I think the red that's top side of the pink spot would be favourite here. <coughs> Nothing to do with the cue ball. It is awkward bridging, but if the red goes in, no problem getting on a colour. Well, he's decided on the other one, so that'll be just be dropping it in dead weight. Thank you. He's off and running again. Well, this is vintage Joe Sullivan, isn't it? And uh, he's clicked into life here. Just when he had to, Ali Carter was coming back at him. And Sullivan has just stepped it up a level. Forty-four. And uh, he's just edged in front. Carter was one percent ahead on the pot success as they went to the interval. It's just swung back O'Sullivan's way. Never lost a Carter. Twelve nil. It's a pretty healthy uh, head to head between the two of them. If he does win tomorrow, it'll be. The 50th match he's won at the Crucible. Don't think of Ronnie as a veteran, but uh, he's 37. He's been playing here now 21 times. 52. 53. It's just amazing how quickly he gets into a frame when in position. This frame's barely been going four or five minutes and he's almost at the point where the frame's going to be finished. Well Carter's played 60. one shot hasn't he and uh, that's going to be his last shot by the looks of it. Left a long red on. 61. Sullivan knocked it in and needs this black and one more red. 61. And he's missed the black. Renew Sullivan, 61. I think he just, quite honestly, was a little bit casual in that one, Ronnie Sullivan. Sort of, I didn't really concentrate on it properly. I think that's why he's opened his eyes.
is a big moment in this match. 15. 8 5 of Sullivan. You would feel sure he would at least take a lead into tomorrow's final session. But if Ali Carter can win this, might just put a few 16. seeds of doubt in Ronnie's mind. <coughs> and send a message to him that, listen, I'm still in here fighting for this match. A menu of cultural delicacies, but also a quality of life that will leave you speechless.
now then. Let's see how good, good Ronnie's long game is. I didn't get, it, didn't get to hit it any better than that. I'll just give him, restore his confidence. from Ronnie there, didn't want to shove the black safe. He can still play on it, but not really the sort of shot he wants to be playing. That's why he's just coming round to have a look and weigh it up. again, as I say, not the sort of shots you want to be playing under pressure. You may just try and dolly it in and not do a lot with the white. Yeah, you see, playing it at any pace whatsoever, it's extremely missable. Taking a two frame lead again. It's 
Sorry, indeed, taking a three-frame lead. And now we could be moments away from things being tied up again. Eight. Quiet, please. It's the interval on the other side, and uh, it's just a bit of noise. And this is just to finish a little awkward, isn't it? It's just come on the side cushion, this cue ball. Just off, off it. Yeah, good thing here is, though, he can play it with a little bit of pace round the back of the black. For the loose red. Just helps the pot a little bit. And cued it beautifully again. 14. Yes, he's striking the ball really nicely and with great confidence. And I always think these long matches, they're sort of matches within matches, aren't they? There's three sessions. You know, if Sullivan won the first match within a match, if Carter could win this session 5-3, it's level. Coming back tomorrow. 15. He could still be in front coming back tomorrow. It's not just a not just a frame of snooker you're playing out there, it's a frame of mind, especially in these long matches. And as you mentioned, Point. Dave, Ali Carter's very feisty and very confident in his own ability, and why not? He's got the pedigree, he's got the record, especially here at the Crucible. He's here to win, make no mistake. It last year, didn't he? Had that great win over Judd Trump from 12 9 down in this very round. Last 16, he won 13 12. Just striking the ball so nicely again there, that one with the rest. He's got that look about him, highly focused on every shot. 26. Yeah, I'll be half disappointed there not to get straight in the red. Got to go back up for blue again. So imperatively finishes top side. 27. Bot bottom one of the two in the pink spot will pass. Beautifully again. 32. So let's look at the lead. 29. Let's see. Two pinks to come. It'll be 44. So he's going to need at least two of the difficult reds, the five difficult reds near the side cushion and this uh, this black cushion. Thanks. 33. <laughs> Forty. his choices. He was just looking a second ago whether he can pot that red nearest the left corner. To see, he has choices here. Can play in a loose one or play some sort of screw shot into the two reds right of picture. I think that's what he's playing. He'll be playing to kiss the one that's on the cushion. Played it much better, could he really? It's exactly what he played. It's been a tad unfortunate. It was 
good recovery, wasn't it? That was high tariff. That thin cut red into the middle. So one more red in a colour should this pink drop. And we'll be back at all square. No, that's not in. Alicata, 46. So Sullivan back at the table, but trailing by 43. This pink staying out. Tense session, this high quality. One frame in it. Of Sullivan back at the table. Don't blame Ronnie there. He was just trying to clip those two reds or open. But there was always going to be a danger of leaving something near the left corner. Now if this goes in, Baron going in off, you would think it would be a frame winner. Wow, look at that. I mean, you just thought, there's no way he can't be on the pink. He's not on it. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I said that, I thought, well, if he... There is half a chance of it, but I don't think it's going to happen. Anyway, it has. I suppose second prize will, will do it. He'll have to settle for that. Well, that's how it looks. Carter just needing one more red to leave. I saw needing a snooker, so... Uh, this is danger time, certainly, for the defending champion. It's going to oh, go back again. Alicata four. And this time, of course, if he doesn't hit it, he will need a snooker. Some of the viewers may think that's quite harsh. I mean, the fact is that Ronnie is trying to hit this loose red in the back cushion, but there is an easier escape, obviously. It's easier to hit the, the two reds on the left side of the table. Well, anyway, this time it's a must-hit, or snookers will be needed. Foul. Well, it can't be called a miss because the snook is needed. Now, if he can drop the red in, he will be on the pink. And that will be seven all. He's played a good frame. Apart from the pink he missed, that was the only real mistake he made. And he potted some good balls before then. Oh, it's not there, so... Well, did he think that moved? One snooker needed. Not quite there yet, and, well, he wants to, he wants to kill someone, it would seem. Yeah, if anyone thinks these pockets are big... Just show them a replay of that last shot. Look at this. Just grazed the cushion about three or four inches in the way in, and it was dead weight, and it still didn't drop. Seven. Eight. Still an outside chance for O'Sullivan in this frame. He still only just needs a one snooker. Fourteen. Yeah, I think that was quite deliberate. Ronnie there trying to move the green. He needs it back in play. Of course, now it's just a question of Lee Carter. Can he put the frame to bed? I think the red will pass the pink. Yeah, it was the one, I think the one problem with the, the shot of Sullivan played, he didn't really make any attempt to get the red safe. So he's left a pot on, Carter's knocked it in, and that's end of frame. And it's going to be seven all, and this is turning into Ali Carter's session. And that last frame where he cleared up, you know, that was looking seven. like eight five. 
It's now seven all with two frames left. He could still be in the lead coming back tomorrow. Don't think the missed yellow is going frame. to matter. Ali Ronnie Carter. O'Sullivan concedes. Fascinating session this. Ali Carter's won four of the six frames played. The match is all square. It's another crucible thriller in operation here. Don't go away. We'll be back very shortly with more. Ali Carter seven, Ronnie O'Sullivan seven. Not only does Luxembourg offer a favourable framework for business, a menu of cultural delicacies, but also a quality of life that will leave you speechless. You have a dream and you have the passion. You want to go beyond what everybody else says is possible. Imagine. You riding alongside a legend. This is your chance. Conquer the road. So Ronnie O'Sullivan, a man under pressure really at the moment. He was 5-1 up, remember, in this match. So Ali Carter's won six of the next eight frames. Ronnie knows he's been here 21 times. There's no hiding place in the Crucible. He knows the focus has been on him more than ever this year, having been away. And right now he's waiting for frame 15, if he can just stay awake uh, long enough for the next frame. Just a couple of little errors have cost him. And uh, at this level, that's all it takes. He's punished so many players down the years. He knows that uh, it can just take one mistake frame to 15. lose a frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yeah, you made a good point earlier, Dave. I think this is the first, well, the last couple of frames. It's the first time he's really been under any genuine pressure this year. Now, how is he going to respond to it? It'll be a big effort. You can guarantee that from Ali Carter in these last two frames of the session. He's got the momentum. Yeah, that was the shot he played. As I say, he's trying to bring the green out here, but he, the red was never safe, so he did give Carter a chance. It was a good pot, though. This will be played with lots of pace, top side of the blue. calling the trade as butchering a shot. <laughs> but, uh, well, easily forgivable there. Such a difficult shot that to play from tight under the bulk cushion. And but for this red spinning near the yellow pocket, he would have gotten away with it. Things just not going Ronnie's way at present. And as normally happens when momentum's not with you, you miss a shot by a whisker and you find you somehow find a way to leave it on. There's the long pot stats. I suppose for O'Sullivan that's on the low side by his own high standards. One. I just think though Carter's queuing so nicely, isn't he? So sweetly. You know, the balls when they go in, they go in bang in the middle of the pocket. Like the red at the end of that last frame. Yeah, it's a good point, Dave. I think that's the word is queuing it sweet just at present. Everything's going in the middle. Now he'll feel confident this time going into the pack. As I say, momentum's with him. How's his luck? Well, I've put the <laughs> I put the mockers on him there, I think. <laughs> Six. You can see the disappointment in his face. <clears throat> He probably fancies potting anything he looks at just at the minute. Yeah. And the worse, even worse news is he can't really play an attack in safety in the bulk area. 
Charlie Carter, six. Can't beat these long matches, can you, at the World Championship? Most tournaments. Jorge O'Sullivan, obviously, 5-1. he would be through to the next round. But uh, this is now the only event where you have long matches from the start, including the qualifying. And it gives uh, the chance for the momentum to shift, for players to get back into matches from long ways behind and to really produce the drama that this great tournament is so associated with. Yeah, couldn't agree more, Dave. We've seen some matches... Not so much this week at the Crucible, but a few weeks ago at the qualifying. We've seen a few big leads evaporate quickly. Ken Doherty, the past world champion, was 9-4 behind to Matt Selt, came back to 9 each. Just failed to get over the line in the end, and credit to Matt Selt for that. Also, fellow Scotsman of mine and a good pal of mine, young Anthony McGill. One. Oh, look at that, that's a bonus for Ali Carter. I was just about to say Anthony McGill. He was 7 2 behind going into the second session. And he got it back at one stage to 8 all. And just once again failed to get the job done. Well, things have gone against O'Sullivan. Some of it his own fault, some of it not. This was uh, a fluke, obviously, by Carter, but it gave him the chance to tuck him in behind the brown with red spread far and wide. Yeah, this answer's on a postcard as to which shot Sullivan plays here. He really can't play a shot with any, well, what you would call skill to drop in something. There's no red that he can rest on where he can guarantee safety. Right back in the D, not the worst place he could have finished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Ronnie has a genuine sort of laugh there. Ali Carter's more of a grimace, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, as I said before, it, there was no way he could play a, a skillful shot to escape there. It was just hit and hope. Sometimes that's all you can do. <laughs> can Ali Carter wipe the smile off his face by knocking this in? Well, well there's your answer. Initially, Ali Carter did fluke a red to get in behind the brown, so maybe justice was done in the end. One. There's no consolation for Ali Carter, because just look at the chance O'Sullivan has now. Well, he's really got to focus, hasn't he, because a couple of frames ago he was nicely in Mr Black on 61 when it looked like he couldn't miss anything. And at that point in the match, things were going his way. He just had a century, he was flying, so... Can't afford any more mistakes because, of course, Ali Carter cleared up from that miss. 
Yeah, this is where snooker players earn their, earn their money. Been pegged back to seven each, two frames to go, and are presented with a great chance Eight. like this. It's all about composure and staying in the moment. Now that's gone a tad wrong Ten. as well. There's probably a bit more angle in this red than appears on her camera, on screen rather. Just has to be careful Eleven. with the cue ball. He's just about got on the black, I think. As I said, that could easily have gone wrong. Yeah, I think he can just bend that a, a touch. Nothing to do with the white. He does have a red below the black spot. It was only just, wasn't it? <laughs> and his heart skipped a beat for a second. 18. It's almost like these pockets are tightening up with every shot. 19. 19. Welcome back to the Crucible, Ronnie. Well, he's been put under pressure here many times. He's responded many times. 27. Again, that one uh, wasn't clean, but it dropped just off the jaw. 34. 35. Yeah, you can be sure. His concentration levels will be at maximum here. Ronnie will know the importance of this contribution. 42. Another thing he does, though, Sullivan, when he does get put under pressure and is presented with a chance, 43. he seems to get back into the groove so quickly, doesn't he? You know, OK, he's wobbled a couple of, a couple of balls in this break, but, as I say, it doesn't take him long 49. 50. No, already up to 50 for the break. 57. That's clever <clears throat> little shot there, Ronnie. Half played for the red in the middle. Played it a bit harder than intended. Always knew he would be on this one. Once again, it wiped its feet up. Four hours playing time. It's been excellent snooker right from the start. Well, he's not over the line yet. He needs 65. another red here. 65. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. <laughs> Snooker required. Ah, oh, brilliant. You saw him doing the... Hang on. <laughs> He's OK. You saw him doing the maths there, just working out. He needed one more red. He saw a chance to double it, and double it he did. And it should now surely be 8-7 to the Rocket. I think Carter will certainly play on, but uh, he needs three snookers. Oh. And the frame. Looks like he's not playing on. It was a great break from Ronnie O'Sullivan, and uh, he's back in front. What a fascinating duel this is. There's one more frame to come in this session. O'Sullivan with his nose in front once again at 8 7. a dream and you have the passion you want to go beyond what everybody else says is possible imagine you riding alongside a legend this is your chance conquer the road not only does Luxembourg offer a favorable framework for business a menu of cultural delicacies but also a quality of life that will leave you speechless.
So one more frame. Well, if Carter can win this one, he'll have won the <laughs> session 5-3. It'll be 8-all. If he loses it, he'll still be maybe a bit disappointed to be two frames down because he's played so well in this session. But, uh, of course, it's not over yet. One more frame to come. That will start when Ronnie O'Sullivan returns. They'll be back tomorrow night to finish off. So we'll have it to live for you tomorrow night here on Eurosport. So a big frame this now. The final frame of this session. Carter looking to draw level. Ali Carter to break. promise you something, he wouldn't have had that back when the white was halfway in its journey. How well did he hit this and not pot it? Fortunately for Ronnie, the reds came away far enough to make it difficult. Too difficult, in fact, for Ali Carter to have a go at it. Too dangerous. Both players will be fully aware of the importance of this frame. I think O'Sullivan would probably, can, if he wins the, this frame, he would probably consider he's just dodged a, a bullet. Because, as I said earlier, the momentum was all with Ali Carter. And it wasn't beyond the realms of possibility. He could have taken a 9-7 lead. Of course, that's gone now. like he's shaping up to take this red on. Mm, I for one don't fancy it. I've seen a few times this afternoon how tight these pockets are. Yeah, such a high tariff shot that. Now, has he done any damage? Carter's turn to be fortunate there. Looked for all the world. He missed that red. He was bound to leave something. was that. Now does this red pass to the right centre? If it does, it's a great opportunity for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Right. This could be the earliest prediction ever, but There was ever a maximum chance the way these reds are sitting. Eight. It's absolutely perfect. I don't think it'll be in Ronnie's mind just yet. Nine. I think that positional shot puts paid to any maximum. Probably not a 
a bad thing. See, such a big frame in this match. Last one before the end of the session. Terrific recovery. Now, can he find the gap? 17. Oh, just about. Well, he's been pushed hard this afternoon, but uh, signs here that he's responding. 21. That's the point coming back after a year. He's never going to coast to the world title. He would have to play well to win it. And uh, he played well in this match, still not guaranteed to win it, but he's starting to produce the sort of snooker that he certainly produced last year when he did 25. catch his fourth world title. 26. 31. He just overran a fraction there, but that might suit Ronnie here. He can just drop this in. Finish straightish on the black. 32. Thirty-nine. Forty. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. Now, he just wants to keep his concentration here. Two or three rounds away. I'm securing the frame. Of course, he made made the mistake a couple of frames ago, missing on about 60. 55. Let Ali Carter in for the counter clearance. Yeah, and just at the point where he's about to win the frame, it's ran awkward. Oh, wow. <laughs> 64. Wow. So the brown is frame ball. Well, very impressive finish, bearing in mind how strongly Ali Carter came back. 69. Well, Sullivan just moved up another gear. You wonder how many gears he can move up. But we've seen it before from him. 74. Ali Carter certainly has. 12-0 on the head-to-head -to, -head to O'Sullivan. 75. But it's uh, still very close when they come back tomorrow. There's only two in it. And if Carter can make a good start, then he can still win tomorrow night. It's one not to be missed either way. Second now, can he finish piece. with another century? He had one in frame 12. Thank you. 81. Just trying to get the red out. 82. Didn't quite do it. It's nice that Ronnie wants to give the crowd another century, isn't it, Dave? You know, you could see the desperation on him there to <laughs> kick the red off the side 86. cushion. It's still on. 86. Well, it's a good 86. It's been a great session of snooker, one of the best of the championship this year. Ali Carter played his full part, got it back to 7 all. But O'Sullivan breaks of 73 and 86 in the last two frames. So his two-frame lead that he had when they resumed this afternoon is intact. He leads overnight by nine frames to seven. As quiet as possible, please. Great stuff, that. I think it probably was the best session we've seen this uh, World Championship so far. Well, there's another match on, so we're not going to go anywhere. We're going to uh, go over to that one.
we will take a break shortly, but just to show you what's happening, well, uh, Ding uh, has been done terrifically well this afternoon because he was 6-2 down to Mark King when they resume, but it's now 7-6 to Ding, so he's won all five frames. They've got three left, including that one. It's been on Eurosport 2, but it'll be coming over to us shortly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a short commercial break and then we will be back live for more from the World Championship. Ding Junhui against Mark King. That's coming up very shortly. In the heat of the crucible, the suffocating intensity of the silent struggle for world supremacy. With everyone scheming to steal the trophy from the mercurial Ronnie O'Sullivan. The World Snooker Championship, live from the Crucible, tomorrow at 1400 on Eurosport. up to the fact of exactly what he has achieved. This oh, was the look at that! Perfectly delivered, and wow. he's just said goodbye to everybody. Magnificent ride, brilliant win. Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan! He has to be mentally strong himself, as you say, which he is normally. Outstanding action, extreme emotion. That's May on Eurosport. Thanks. Watch this. Massive disappointment. What a picture that is. Oh, it is. No. are high. Welcome back. Ding Junhui, seven, Mark King, six. So three frames, including this one. Of course, it was 6-2 overnight to Mark King. He played very good snooker last night to take that lead, but right now he's behind. Ding's won five on the spin. King, 20 nil up as we join this uh, frame live. Mark King, the world number 30 from uh, Braintree in Essex. This is his 14th appearance at the Crucible, but he's never been to the quarterfinals. That's the stage he's trying to get to. It's his first appearance in the second round for four years, and he beat one of the favourites for the title, Mark Allen, who'd had uh, such a good season winning the World Open. He beat him 10-8, and he played terrifically well at the end of that match. He was 8-6 down, and really played four good frames to win. Played well last night, but right now he is trailing. Yeah, he just needs to re-establish himself in this match. Having lost five in a row. All seven, six behind. Three frames, including this one. Remain in the session. Marking 24. Yeah. Well, 
we've said many times this week, Dave, that's the beauty of these matches, especially the second round matches, best of 25s. You can't afford to have a bad session, 6-2 or 5-3, and there's still plenty of time to come back in the match, as Ding has proved. Well, I think you can see this. If you can't, he's been fortunate. You can hear the wall, you can see the wall going up, so everyone who stayed behind after the O'Sullivan Carter session can now enjoy the rest of this one.